played a significant part in one of the most notorious episodes in British history, an event so infamous that we still remember it today. Any ideas where I am? Find out in just a moment. Today I'm helping a dog-loving couple to take more walkies out in the countryside. At our first property, they find it hard to agree on the basics. You don't want a huge house, do no, you? No, no, we don't. Well, we don't. maybe. No, we don't need There's a huge There's a nice house. one next door. Oh, Peter. <laughs> but then our mystery house proves almost too good to be true. We've been saying, head, we need to do this, we need that. It doesn't matter when you see something like that, does it? I'm in the county of Warwickshire, and this is Coton Court, which has been the ancestral home of the Throckmorton family for the past 600 years. It became notorious for the part it played in the gunpowder plot, an attempt by conspirators, the most famous being Guy Fawkes, to blow up the Houses of Parliament and assassinate the King, James I. And it was here this dastardly deed was plotted over a full two years before that fateful day on November the 5th, 1605. Now, out of all of the plotters, it was only Thomas Throckmorton who was found innocent. The rest were either imprisoned or met a grisly end. Fascinating to think such an important event was played out in this beautiful setting. Landlocked in the heart of England and divided into two by the River Avon, Warwickshire is a county of contrasts. Just 55 miles in length, the majority of the county's half a million residents live in the north, an area which prospered from its proximity to the cities of Coventry and Birmingham. It's an intensively farmed county, which is reflected in the appearance of the countryside. Many of the quiet villages here, such as Stoneleigh, feature 17th century timber box frame cottages. But towards the south of the county, the houses are markedly different, constructed of locally quarried lyre stone. The average cost of a detached house in the county is just under £265,000. That's around £10,000 above the national average. But this figure pales into insignificance when you look at prices in Stratford-upon-Avon. With gorgeous housing stock and great commuter links, a detached home in the birthplace of William Shakespeare, well, it's going to set you back around the £400,000 mark. Let's take a look at some of the properties available across the county. For £285,000, you could be the owner of this two-bedroom thatched cottage in Sutton under Brails. Immaculately refurbished, it has a good-sized sitting room, a modern kitchen and a lawn garden to the rear. £550,000 will buy you this three-bedroom barn conversion in Wheatley. It boasts exposed beams in the sitting room, terracotta tiles in the kitchen and spectacular views of the surrounding countryside. And for a wallet stretching £799,000, you could be the owner of this stunning five-bedroom house in Longmaston. Packed with period detail, this property dates back to the 14th century and is believed to be the oldest house in the village. A lovely selection there. Now it's time to meet today's buyers and find out why they're ready to escape to the country. Lecturer Peter and former teacher Alison are planning to move to Warwickshire to continue their passion for volunteer work with guide dogs and puppies. Since 1999, we've puppy walked for guide dogs. and Their headquarters is in Leamington. And we would like to get more involved with other aspects of the work that they do. And we're too far away at the moment. So it's something we're both keen on. Yeah. and spend a lot of time on. And although in the past we've had 13 puppies to walk, we've now got a, a breeding a dog. <laughs> uh, and the breeding dog needs ideally to be nearer the breeding yes, centre. But there's also another reason for the couple's move to the country. A few years ago, Alison discovered she had a life-changing illness, which has meant they've had to completely rethink their current way of life. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, and we know it's a progressive illness. I'm, 
I'm managing it very well now, but I'm not going to be able to do it. So we thought now's the time to bite the bullet, find somewhere that we want with a flat garden and get involved in something new together a lot more. Despite Alison's illness, our couple have no plans to take it easy just yet. We like walking, walking. riding our bikes when I don't fall off. Um, we'll get a tandem for you. <laughs> Um, I'd like to do more riding again um, and everybody says it but what do I want to have? Chickens, <laughs> yet more animals of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> While Alison is spending time with her menagerie, Peter also wants to indulge in his other hobbies. I've got a, a model railway which has been sitting in boxes for years and there isn't room here for it. Uh, I play the piano and play the guitar but I need to do a lot more practice so I'll have time for that. They've lived in their five-bedroom house a few miles from Stafford for the last 16 years. But with a move to Warwickshire on the cards, they've got clear ideas on what they'd ideally like to find in their new house. We need a large utility for the dogs. Yes, we do. Nine puppies is rather a lot to handle in, in our current kitchen. house. Um, three bedrooms. I suppose Pete will want somewhere for his oh, piano. Oh. Uh, and a ki large kitchen oh. diner. Those are the must-haves. And with no need to sell before they can move, that just leaves the all-important subject of money. Our maximum budget, if there was no renovations to be done, would be £450,000. We're concentrating our search on the area within an hour of Royal Leamington Spa, where the Guide Dog Centre is located. We've got three eye-catching properties to tempt them with, but, as usual, I won't reveal the price until they've had a guess first. And with today's mystery house, I've got high hopes that it could turn their world upside down. So, Peter and Alison, welcome to Warwickshire. Now, Alison, you've enlisted our help because apparently we need to rein Peter in a little bit. He's a bit of a dreamer, I um, believe. Yes, just a bit. He's got grand ideas, grandioso ideas, actually, and he just needs to be calmed down a little bit at times. So what is it about you then, Peter? Do you see these huge mansions and think, I could live there? Yes, and I think, oh, I could do them up, and I'll spend years doing them up. And, and not finishing. And not finishing. Nearly finishing. <laughs> really? There's plenty to do. Needs reining in. That's our job. OK. So if we do find your perfect property, your dream house, who makes the final decision? Well, Pete will say yes or no, straight away. Instant decision. And I will then have to sort of manage to get him round to seeing the pluses if I like it, or I'll go along with it. If I don't like it, that's fine. But you'll know from Pete in an instant, yes or no. So literally, Peter, on the doorstep, yeah. you'll make yeah. a decision. My you face get will show in. <laughs> oh, oh. Instant like or dislike. We might have to push him inside, you know. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. I've got my work cut out with you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nicky, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Two women to persuade me. <laughs> oh. Should we drink up and get going? With a maximum budget of £450,000, which includes any renovation, Peter and Alison want three bedrooms, a large kitchen, a utility room for the puppies, a room for Peter's piano, and a flat garden. We've travelled 10 miles south of Royal Leamington Spa, close to the village of Kyneton. Its church, St Peter's, dates back to the 14th century. It's believed that John Newton wrote the hymn Amazing Grace here in 1772, after converting to Christianity. Our first property is a newly built red brick house, sitting centrally within its own plot. So, here is your very first property. What do you think? It's lovely. It's very spacious in the front. Looks a bit big for me. <laughs> it looks a bit big. No, no, you need all that space. Peter's going to love it. No, that's right. Yeah. No, no it, lo it looks good. Yeah. So it's a promising start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Come on then, let's go inside. Yeah, yeah, You're just right. Yeah, yes. that'd be good. <laughs> Although it looks big from the outside, I think Alison might be surprised at just how cosy the interior of this property is. Step inside. I'm going to take you straight through into the sitting room. Nice wooden floors. Yeah. Is that I a think... working fire or...? 
There is an open flue, but you'd need to put in your own fire. That all present project. owners have looked at. Yeah, project number yeah. one. Ah. Would you like a wood burner in there? Yes, I would, would. to give a focal point, I think. It's um, nice. Nice view out at the back. Plenty of size. I don't know where the piano is going to go. No, I did think that. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay. Could go, could go in the corner. Might have to go. We might have other options. You didn't hear that, did you? Yes, have to build outside. Oh, please. <laughs> did I hear you say it might have to yeah, go? Yeah, you did. Oh, well, you could put a conservatory on. It's already yeah, started. Right, right, I'm going to take you through, see what else we've got. There may be a solution to the piano problem elsewhere in this house. But before that, let's see what they think of the kitchen. Now, a big kitchen. Oh, yeah. yes, that is a big kitchen. Was a must. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Good flooring. Yep. Yes. Nice and wide. For the dogs. Now, with these all important puppies. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This would be fantastic. Yes. Mm. It really would, because you it could would. have them there and fence it off. I want more ready and more way now. Yeah. Stair gate. We're, we're changing this yeah. already, aren't we? Yeah, that's now, through right. the door there is a utility room. Right. With all the white goods and access to the garden. And the sink. Yep, there's Brilliant. a sink in there. Brilliant. Which, major consideration when yeah. you have puppies. Yes, yeah. unfortunately. But also to the right, <laughs> through that door, you've got a very large study. Right. That could be perfect for the baby grand, perhaps, having it as a reading room, yeah. train sets. Yeah guitar lock on the outside yeah. or if you wanted to keep the utility room as it is that could, could be, be a puppy room what's good is when we first looked at the house i thought it was really big but actually it's big enough but it isn't as big as it appeared from the outside and you, you don't think. want a huge house do no you? no we don't well, we don't maybe. no we don't need <laughs> there's a nice house. one next door oh, Peter. <laughs> So it's still a battle of wills when it comes to agreeing on how much space they need and how to use it. But let's see if they can agree on how to use the upstairs of this property. So to give you the geography of the upstairs, you've got the family bathroom just behind us. We've got two good-sized bedrooms, a very large hallway. Yeah. And here's the master, which I think is a little bit special. Still doing well, Nikki. Yes, good size. <laughs> yeah. Windows front and yeah, back, like morning that. and evening lights. Yes. Yeah, it's nice. And that is a very generous ensuite. Good. For the majority of the time, there will That's be it. just the two of you. Yes, keep reminding him, Nikki. And the dog. We don't yeah. need five bedrooms. We don't need all this space. <laughs> So we've got three bedrooms. <laughs> you look disappointed. <laughs> well, there's plenty of room in the garden to build. <laughs> oh, Pete. He's looking at a project. Oh. Yeah. Outside, there's plenty of room for Peter's project, whatever it might be, as there's a sheltered patio and an expanse of lawn. So you probably notice standing here that you've got about the same amount of garden at the back as you have at the front. Yeah, I mean, this is my reality check, isn't it? It's flat, it's smaller, like I said, but... In theory, I'd like a bigger garden. In practice, this is probably more than adequate. And there's lots you could do to it, isn't there? Yes, there's plenty of room to make more flower beds around the edge for you, less lawn to mow for me, <laughs> and it looks like light soil. So I'm going to put you on the spot now. How much do you think this house is currently on the market for? I'm going to go 425. I'll go 430,000. The actual asking price is... £450,000. Well, there you go. That's what we said was our maximum. So yeah. now we know what our... So we have hit your maximum yeah. budget. Yeah. However, it's given you something to think it about. Has. Yeah, that's right. As but the it, first one, it's It great. is. It's it only is. the first house. And nothing to do. I um, mean, you could move straight in. Yeah. I'm sure you'd find something to do. <laughs> <laughs> go and take him around for another look and see yeah, if you can convince him nothing <laughs> needs doing. I will. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank I'll talk you. Catch up with you in a minute. At their maximum budget of £450,000, this property needs no renovations and delivers well on their demands. It has three bedrooms, space for Peter's baby grand, a huge kitchen with dog-friendly flooring, and a manageable flat garden. It's a modern house, but it's got character, which I think is very important. See, I think this is a good-sized room, don't you? It is, yes. I mean, get the piano in here. Yeah, you could have the piano up that corner. Yeah. I could shut you in here with your trains and your music. That'd be good. Yeah. And I think that could work well, don't Very you? Good. I thought this house was interesting. It wasn't particularly what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting such a modern house. Having said that, I like it. 
I would have liked a bit bigger garden, but that's perhaps my reality check. All right, you two. Yeah, thank you. First house done, happy? Yeah, for a first house. It's very good, but I bet you've got even better things up your sleeve. <laughs> oh, I can feel the pressure. <laughs> Come on. No, thank you. During the 1800s, Royal Leamington Spa was a popular destination of the great and the good, due to the supposed healing properties of its spring water. Queen Victoria granted the town its royal prefix in 1838. Her statue, which stands by the town hall, was erected in 1902 at a cost of £1,500. Royal Leamington Spa is also home to the newly opened Guide Dogs for the Blind Breeding Centre. So with Peter and Alison looking to get even more involved with volunteering for the charity, we've arranged for them to have a tour with its manager, Matthew Bottomley. Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm the breeding centre manager here. Pleased to meet you. I'm Alison. Hi. I'm Peter. Hello, Peter. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Guide Dogs for the Blind was founded in 1931 and has since been entirely dependent on voluntary donations. So come on through. This is the um, an upstairs sort of walkway um, indoor gallery, if you like. This is our first block for you to look into, um, where all our, our um, baby pups are. Now, of course, as you know, our breeding mums normally live and whelp, that's give birth to puppies in, in family homes, just like you do yourself. But there are some that, for whatever reason, can't give birth at home and have to come into the centre to, to, to give birth. Um, but, of course, what we're looking for is, um, well, lots of help, really, in terms of all sorts of different volunteering areas. For example, puppy socialising. So that's people that will actually sit in with the puppies, um, play with the puppies, get them used to being handled and touched yeah. And, and, yeah, just generally playing with them. Oh, I'd love to that. That would be fantastic. That would be great if yeah. that's something that you'd be yeah, willing no, to help us with. Up to 1,500 puppies a year can now be bred for work with blind and partially sighted people. The new puppy block is where Peter and Alison's puppies will come when they're six or seven weeks old. Here they'll be vaccinated, microchipped and vet checked before they're sent to their puppy walking families, another set of volunteers. So what sort of qualities are you particularly looking for in the puppies that we're sending to you? Mm. First and foremost, the dogs need to be willing. They need to want to do yeah. the job. And all these types of dogs, as you can see, these puppies are very very happy and affable and friendly types and would be willing to, to work with a blind and partially sighted person. But of course, they'll also have to adapt to different handlers. So they've been with you for a while, right. your puppies. Then they move on to a puppy walker. Then they move on to a professional yeah. trainer and ultimately to a, to a blind or partially sighted person. So they've got to be adaptable. They've got to be able to cope with change. So do all the dogs go on to be guide dogs? Well, not all, but we're actually very proud of our success rate of all the dogs that we breed um, between 70 and 75 percent will go on and become guide dogs the charity trains roughly 780 guide dogs every year before the crucial stage of matching them up with an owner a guide dog's working life is usually six to seven years and latest figures show that there are about four and a half thousand guide dog users in the uk So, after strengthening their ties with the charity, I'm hoping that Peter and Alison have got an added incentive to find that property nearby. For our second house, we've bought a hop to the edge of Leicestershire. Still within that hour from Royal Leamington Spa, we're heading towards Market Bosworth. The town was the site of the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, the final battle in the War of the Roses between the House of Lancaster and the House of York. Our second property is a Grade Two listed character conversion dating back to around 1750. So, for something completely different from the first house that we took you to see, here is your second property. What do you think? A lovely looking good. house. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not so sure about where we are. Leicestershire or the distance oh, from the He's off, he's off. The distance, <laughs> maybe. The distance from guide dogs. Half an hour, yes, but it's not an attractive half an hour. Well, I'm going to ask <laughs> you this question again when we finish the right, tour yeah, of the house fair. and you've seen everything that comes with it and see if I've managed to change your mind. <laughs> yeah. Shall we step inside? Yeah. Come on. Great. 
Well, Peter did say he makes instant judgments. So let's see if the interior can persuade him to consider this property more carefully. So the front door leads straight into the kitchen stroke dining room. As you can see, it's yeah. brand new. Yeah. Nice floors. And is that the back door? Yeah, access to the back door. Stay through the there. door, nice, good for dogs. You've got a utility room just right. to the right, and that leads to a downstairs cloakroom. Right. I think the way this barn has been converted, it flows beautifully. Yeah. It also benefits from windows on both, both sides. sides of the property, yeah. which you don't often get. And as it is grade two listed, yeah. Yeah, it's been done extremely well. Yeah. And how about those beams? You like a bit of character. Yes, it's got character. But it's not over yeah. fussy or over pokey. No, it's so, got a contemporary yeah. feel, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. The upstairs is divided into two, with a separate staircase for each area. From the kitchen, there's access to two good-sized guest bedrooms and a shared bathroom. At the other end of the house, this staircase from the playroom, which could become Peter's music room, leads up to another guest bedroom, a generously sized bathroom and the largest bedroom of the lot. And here is the master bedroom. That's nice. That's lovely. Really nice. And because the four bedrooms are divided, two on one side with a bathroom and the other two this side, in a way, that's going to be like an ensuite because yeah, no one else yeah. will be on this side of the property. That would give us the space as and when we needed it. And when you didn't, you could virtually shut it off. I yeah. wouldn't have to clean it then. And I could have a piano room oh, downstairs, no. a <laughs> railway room <laughs> upstairs. See, practical. Yeah. So what do you think about the property itself? I think the property's lovely, but I want to see the garden. Oh, can I convince you both with the garden? Oh, but the garden would be too big. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> While there's a great deal to the garden, including a pond, a long lawn, room for Alison to keep those chickens, and a large paved patio area, I'm pretty certain they could easily manage looking after it. Well, this is lovely. <laughs> it's too big. No, no, the all-important garden, as you can see, it goes all the way back yeah. to the and trees at the end. And it's flat. And, it and is a pond. Flat. And a pond. Gosh. And then you look back... Your beautiful barn. Yes, it's lovely. It is actually. Now you think it's big. Mm. You asked for a third of an acre, didn't yes. you? Yes. I did. It's under half an acre, and <laughs> that includes the long driveway yes. and a double garage. That's lovely. Mm. Oh. So Ooh, what do you think? I'm getting itchy fingers. Are you? <laughs> yeah. So as the rain starts to fall, will it put a dampener on how much they'd pay for this house? Well, at least it's dry under this gazebo, so serious business now. <laughs> How much do you think this converted barn is currently on the market for? So Your it's team. me first. Yeah. Go on, Peter. I, I find it a difficult one because I don't know this area at all. It's further away than I thought, so... And you don't like the area? Uh, no, but that's not going to affect what I think okay. it's worth. Right. Uh, 440000 mm -hmm. Alison, how much do you think? I'm going to be optimistic and say 460. Okay. The current asking price for the barn is 475,000 oh. pounds. <laughs> However, we have spoken to the owners and they are willing to look at offers in the region of your budget which is 450,000 pounds because they know that you're willing to move quickly oh, and you yes. can move yeah. quickly. That's why mm -hmm they would look at serious offers around that amount of money. There's good yes. conversations to go on there, there are, aren't there? Yeah. Mm. Do you want to go and take another look around? That would be yes. great, thank you. So, at £475,000, but with offers willing to be considered around their maximum budget of £450,000, this property has everything they've asked for and more. There's four bedrooms, space for Peter's piano, a huge kitchen with utility room for the puppies and under half an acre of flat, manageable garden with space for some chickens. The house is lovely. It possibly is too big for us. What I wasn't so happy about was the approach to the house. It's also further away from Leamington, so if we were to spend time with the guide dogs, it would be a further trip. I'm surprised I don't feel as 
happy about the house as I thought I would. In pa on paper, I think this house is everything that I would have said I wanted if you'd have asked me. And yet there's just something that doesn't make me go whoopee. Well, that's it for today. You've seen both the houses. Have you enjoyed it? Yes. Yeah, it's been a good day. Really good. good. Thank you. And we've got one more tomorrow. Yeah. That's the mystery house. As evening falls over the Warwickshire countryside, it marks the end of day one of our property search. Lecturer Peter and his wife Alison are hoping to pursue their passion for volunteering with guide dogs in the county of Warwickshire. Alison has Parkinson's disease and so their new property must have a flat, manageable garden. The two properties so far have both had their good points, but still to come, our mystery house could turn their property dream on its head. It's a folly, it says it's a folly, <laughs> I don't, can't be right. <laughs> and I join a 750-year-old ceremony in Ulster. Gentlemen, are we ready? Lead on. Thank you. So we have just crossed the border into Gloucestershire, so we're on the edge of your 20-mile boundary search. But we are in the Cotswolds. So, what do you think we're taking you to see? It could be part of a house. It could be a cow shed to convert rather oh, than the barn. No. I don't know. There's nothing I would turn my nose up at, I don't think. As long as it's not in Leicestershire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's cool. We've travelled 20 miles south of Royal Leamington Spa crossing into Gloucestershire to the village of Blockley. Its civil parish includes the pretty North Cotswold hamlet of Aston Magna, which is where our mystery house is located. The property offers a contemporary twist on a period Cotswold stone cottage. And while it may not be as practical as they've asked for, I think they'll find it irresistible. So I brought you to the village of Aston Magna, this is so this unfair. Is unfair. No, why is this unfair? We Tell me. I can see by your faces. <laughs> we know it. This is it's probably my Way dream area. But is it? Too yes. It must be a tent in a field. It must be Nicky. <laughs> it's a kennel for you oh, and the doggies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why am I not surprised? But it is the mystery house, you see. And we thought North Cotswolds, beautiful, Awful. just outside Awful. of the yeah. search area by a few miles. A few miles doesn't matter Worth. when it's nice. <laughs> All no this buses. logic <laughs> just gone. Just gone. Yeah. So you don't want to see the mystery house? No, then? Not at no. All. no, we'll go. No, we'll we go. Home? Yeah, bye. All right. Well, let's just get one reaction from you, and then we'll go. Okay. Turn round, because this is it. Oh, it's a folly. It says it's a folly. <laughs> I don't, can't be right. <laughs> oh. Are you convinced? Is it worth stepping no, through the door? Not at all. Can we go now, please? And why is that? Because you don't want your heart broken? Yes, probably. We've been saying, head. We need to do this. We need that. It doesn't matter when you see something like that, does it? Well, it doesn't get better than that. Love at first sight. And I'm sure they'll be equally besotted with the inside. So welcome to your mystery house. You're itching to get in, um, aren't you? Yes, we are. It is very, very different. It's an upside-down house. Upside-down house, yeah. right, fine. So you've got your bedrooms on this level yeah. and your living accommodation up there. Come on, let's go. Are you ready? <laughs> you are, aren't you? <laughs> Love is still in the air for our mystery house, so I'm heading up to the living area. So let's start off with the sitting room. In a way, I think it's a double sitting room. <sighs> oh, that was a lovely sigh. A nice high ceiling. I like the end gable being open as well. Yes, it lets more light and mm. lovely wooden floors. Did you expect it to be this large? No. No. I thought it no. could be quite pokey and dark, which I wouldn't have liked. But in here is far more the sort of contemporary living. It's best of both worlds, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And there's yet more to see. There's more to see. But where's the piano going? Oh. OK, before we leave this room, <laughs> let's figure this one out, because the baby grand... We have to go. ..stop at home. Pardon? Is it, is it allowed to go or not? If it has to. Hey, oh. on camera. <laughs> so let's go through into the kitchen. I think it actually flows oh, yeah, really it does. well. It does. Yeah. Beautiful. A bit smaller, perhaps, than I would have hoped for. Nice it's island unit. Enough. 
and the view. Out there. There. Oh yeah, yeah, that's lovely actually. Beautiful. Look, she's forgotten the units already. Yeah, yeah well, well, I could wash up even with that view, I think. Yeah. You've got sturdy, yeah, fossilised tiles, yeah. good for the mm. dogs. So it's a really good space here, mm. and it actually flows even more because at the end you've got sort of a child's play area. Right, yeah. And there's access by that huge window back into oh, the main into sitting the main, room. Yeah. So it actually is a circle. So, so far with the mystery house, what do you think? I do love it. Pete, you warned me that you were going to be very honest with these house searches. And so far, all I've heard is positive comments. Yes, I like it very much. I fear it may be dark downstairs. Well, time to find out. Follow me. So they're both more than a bit smitten, and I have the feeling that the downstairs bedrooms won't change matters one bit. So here is your master bedroom on the ground floor. Oh, it's a black hole. <laughs> no, it's not. It's very light. I didn't expect it to be this light down here. I mean, luckily, it's got a huge window. Yeah, out onto the road, but that doesn't matter because it across the road's a beautiful garden to look at, aren't you? No, it's surprising, this, isn't it? it? So have you been convinced on this bedroom, then? Uh, this bedroom is fine, it's very light, but maybe the other ones oh, will gosh. be a little dark. Well, there are three. Three? So three bedrooms in total and a family bathroom. Shall we take a look at one of them to put your mind at rest? Yeah, convincing. After you, Alison, you lead the way. Thank you. The family bathroom is off a spacious hallway, as is the smallest bedroom, perfect for the grandchildren. This double room has a little less light than the master, but will that worry Peter? So here we have one of the two other bedrooms. It is a little dark, yeah, in the sense it's, it's a little window, but I don't know, maybe something could be done about that. And it's dark when you sleep. So it doesn't matter if it's dark. <laughs> yes, in fact, you'll sleep in longer. <laughs> Let's go outside now. Thank you. Have a look at the garden. Outside, there's a paved patio area and a lawn. The only drawback is the lawn is slightly sloping. But will that be enough to spoil this love story? So all of this is your garden up to the tree. There's a nice dry stone wall at the end there, yep. I saw. It's not flat. <laughs> it's not flat. It's not flat. It's not as steep as the one that you have at the moment. No, no. no. But it would need to be, I think, landscaped to suit yeah, your needs. It would. It would. But at the beginning of this search, we did talk about your Parkinson's yeah. disease. We need to be mindful of that yeah. condition. If you look at the sitting room, you've got those huge windows. Mm. There's three panels there. If you made one of those a door, perhaps two yes. of them patio doors, yes. yeah. and had it's not a drawbridge, but a bridge across <laughs> mm. into the garden. The access point, it might be a little easier that's for you. No, I think that's a really good idea, actually. So this Cotswold Cottage, how much is it currently on the market for? Uh, it's going to be 450000 at least. I think it's got to be at least 470 Current price is £475,000. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We are in the Cotswolds. Yeah, we yes, are. We expected This that. village is mm. up there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. However, the owners do know you're serious about moving, but you could move pretty quickly, and they would look at offers in the region of £450,000. <laughs> we double-checked it. Right. It's very tempting. <laughs> very tempting. Do you want to go and have another look? Yes. Be my guest. Thank you. So, with a price tag of £475,000, but with offers at their maximum budget being considered, this house more than delivers on their wish list. It has three bedrooms, a spacious puppy-friendly kitchen, an open-plan vaulted sitting room, and a pretty garden that could be adapted to suit Alison's needs. It's nice and light down here, isn't it? There is, and there's potential, isn't there, for yeah. other things could you could do? Could do something there, yeah. yeah. Um, the room there and this one here I could have as a playroom. I think I've got my name on this. No, but the railway would fit in here beautifully. Yeah, it's a nice room. I like this one. You can have next door. It's absolutely beautiful. The price I knew would be high because it's the Cotswolds, but the premium sometimes is worth paying for getting what you want. This house shows you the difference between writing a list on a piece of paper and the reality of what you see. It's the whole package that goes together. Because if I pick it apart, there are lots of things. But then I just screw that piece of paper, put it in the bin, 
because it just works for you. And if it fills your soul, it fills your soul. And it does. That is it, guys. Search over. You've seen all three properties. It's given you something to think about, hasn't it? Yes. If you want to go somewhere quiet, you can gather your thoughts together, see what the next move's going to be. Yes, please. Yes, please. Warwickshire is home to a number of historic and ancient towns, some dating back to Roman times. So it's no surprise to discover that some old traditional ceremonies are still alive and kicking, like this one in the market town of Ulster. I'm with the bizarrely named Ulster Court Leet, one of only 30 such groups in the country. Their mission is to keep alive a tradition that dates back 750 years. Now, of all the court leets in the country, Warwickshire has the highest concentration, but this branch is unique as they have an ancestral lord of the manor. So what or who is a court leet? Now, Nick, you're the grandly named High Bailiff. Are you in charge of all these boys? Well, I'd like to think I am. <laughs> That's the way it goes. So what exactly is your role? Right, Nicky. We used to do the jobs that the Environment Agency does, the Weights and Measure does, the police do. We used to run this town. Wow. That's a lot of power and authority. It used to be. Uh, we lost it in the 70s when the, uh, the Act took our power off us, and we're now purely ceremonial. So what exactly did you do within the community? We used to make sure that the rivers were kept clear, that the roads were maintained, that the bread was of the right weight and quality, that the ale was fit to drink, that the uh, people of the town behaved themselves well, and we had a lot of authority to take action if they didn't. There's a few perks to the job as well, aren't there? <laughs> and and uh, ale tasting is the best. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you were going to mention that. <laughs> Am I able to join you for the ale tasting? I'm glad you asked me that, Nikki. We have arranged for you to take part in today's ale tasting. Excellent. Right. Oh. Ale tester Warwick, the robes. Certainly. Look, I'm getting kitted out. First of all, I will present you with the official gong. Thank you, a gong. Look, I get my own medal. Very smart. Right. And now you have the official ale tasting robes. Oh, look at this. Yeah. And that allows you to partake of the ceremony. Thank you very much. Right. Now then, you need the words. But first, you must rap on the door three times and you must speak very loudly. Well, I hope I can do it justice. You're right. Fine. Make way for the High Bailiff of Ulster, his ale tasters and other officers of the Ulster Court Leet. That's me. Who are here today to conduct the ancient ceremony of ale tasting. So, gentlemen, are we ready? Lead on. Thank you. Are you the landlady of this inn? I, Master Bailiff. I command you to produce two tankards of your finest ale, that my ale tasters may judge of its quality. As you command, Master Bailiff. Ale tasters, do your duty and report to me your findings. After you. Well, Nicky. First thing we have to do is test the temperature. Okay. And I find this the correct temperature for this particular ale. We will now taste it. Well, Nikki, I now find this ale fit for the consumption of the people of Ulster. I agree. <laughs> Traditionally, after a successful tasting, a sprig of evergreen was placed over the pub door as a sign that his ale was fit for public consumption. And with this ale passing the test, it's time for Peter and Alison to call last orders on their house search as they mull over the three properties. Well, Peter and Alison, what a fun few days we've had. Absolutely. It's been great. The question is, have we found you the ultimate escape to the country? 
You could have. You could yeah. have. You could have. Well, let's start, shall we, with the first property that yes. we saw. It was a new build. I thought it was very nice, even first impressions. And inside, I thought it had the sort of accommodation we really needed. It did exactly have everything that we'd asked you for. It was a very sensible house. And when I got my sensible head on, yes, that was good. The second property, <laughs> I'm going to look at you now, <laughs> Peter, um, we, we kept within the 20-mile radius. Mm. The approach to the house hadn't got that attractive countryside feel around it. Mm. And the journey from there to Leamington would be motorway and that's not what I'm looking for. What about the property itself? Oh, it was a beautiful property and I liked the garden and I could see the potential for the garden to make something really special, I know I could. Which brings us nicely to our third property, the mystery house. <laughs> the mystery house. So we'd selected this house, especially for the two of you. Perhaps a house that you might not have considered before. I definitely don't think we'd have considered it because if I'd have been looking at the piece of paper or the internet, I would have had my sensible head on and have said to Pete, don't be silly, it's an upside-down house, it's got steps, it's not the sort of thing we can cope with. And I wouldn't have gone any further. And I don't think you would have done no, either then. I don't think I would have done. Totally impractical <laughs> for keeping a dog and especially keeping puppies. <laughs> Nowhere for a piano, really. That's but, why it's but the I'd mystery. Find somewhere. Exactly, yeah. So where do we go next? Well, I think, first of all, I'd want to go back to the first property. Just so we haven't ruled that one out? Not, well, no, that's still no. my sensible head. Mm, right. But, and then, I would then come up with all the arguments why the third property's <laughs> going to be fine. I think we have to reflect and decide whether we can allow heart to overrule head by saying that, in fact, it doesn't really matter. What really is important is being happy where you're living. Isn't it better to have something you really love for a short period of time and enjoy it and have something good to look back on when I'm in the sensible yes. house? That's perhaps the answer, Pete. Yes, and a positive attitude yeah. is well. good for your condition. Yeah. It is, yeah. And if ever there's someone I've met with a positive <laughs> attitude, <laughs> young lady, it's you. <laughs> thank you. With Pete by your side. Yes, absolutely, yeah. always. Well, thank you both so much. We do wish you well and stay in touch. Let us know what happens. We will, you? we will, thank definitely. You. What a fantastic couple. And I think Alison summed it up rather well. Do they go with the sensible option or throw caution to the wind and go with their heart's desire? I think it's going to be the latter. But whichever they choose, we wish them all the best. See you next time. Peter and Alison have been back to view all three properties, but in the end, they weren't for them.
डिजिटल रिकॉर्डिंग स्टूडियो खगरिया दिला गल बंसी के जारी गे बोन गल छैला बिहारी के तो दिला गल बंसी के जारी गे बोन गल छैला बिहारी के हम पूजा लियो भगवान बनाई के तो जाने ले ले बन के कसाई के कोई ले छैला बिहारी में तो दिला गेला 